Hello there and Happy New Year, Oregon Trio Association. It is Matt Bezik once again with a New Year OTA update. Uh, I have a lot of new information, a lot of dates, a lot of uh, action items I'm asking from all of you as we get into the New Year. So I will go as speedily as possible uh, and jump right into it. I would love to start out by just officially in video format, uh, announced that uh, OTA has made a hire for our second ever full-time position, and we are hiring one of our own, uh, a now former SSS director at Southern Oregon University, Robin Williams, will be joining our team as the new director of TRIO Development and Support. Uh, so Robin's first day is going to be January 22nd, and you'll be hearing more um, from both her and myself about uh, the ways that we're hoping to expand the support that we can provide to all of you and some of the professional development opportunities that will be forthcoming, which includes uh, information around the SSS grant writing competition in the new year. So I'm thrilled to have Robin on board and so excited for that, her to start uh, later this month. Next, I want to highlight a handful of different scholarships uh, that I just wanna announce. Some are new, some are ongoing. Uh, scholarships that you'll recognize as well, but I just want to highlight the various due dates uh, and any kind of special information around each of those. First is the Spring Last Mile Awards. The application is open uh, and the due date is February 23rd for that. So Spring Last Mile due date, February 23rd. Also with a February 23rd due date is our Dirks Trio Achiever Award. So these are our longest standing scholarship program that we uh, started even predating the state funds that we get. There are five, two $500 awards per district. So there is a form that I'm gonna embed in the email where students uh, can apply to these $500 scholarship awards. Uh, the intention is for students who are going to be in college of, for fall of the next year, so fall of 24. So two students from each district will be selected from a panel of folks on our award committee. Uh, we would also ask that each individual program only nominate up to two students each. There is a nomination uh, letter that is a part of the application process. So if you have multiple, let's say upper bound programs, you can nominate two students per program, but we do ask that for each trio grant, you limit your nominations to two students that you want considered for this $500 award. And those funds go directly to the students. So once again, uh, due date on that is also February 23rd. I wanted to take a quick moment again to highlight some of the due dates on the study abroad opportunities that are upcoming. So if you are a current college student looking to participate in the COE sponsored Keith Sharon Award, this again is a program where OTA will uh, cover the expenses for the students uh, to attend, uh, not to the initial application fee, but that gets reimbursed if you're not selected to go. Uh, and gets applied obviously to the balance if you are a student that's picked to go. So if an Oregon student is picked to go, the program costs and flight costs to get to the East Coast will all be covered by OTA. So we encourage students to apply to the key sharing opportunity. The due date for that is January 16th. So it is less than two weeks away. So make sure to get on that and help students complete that application so we can try to get some Oregon representation with that uh, study abroad opportunity. If you are working with high school students and want to look at doing one of these summer abroad programs that they offer uh, through many different locations throughout the U.S., uh, the application for that is going to be due on January 24th. So using the link on our website, which I'll link in the email, gets you to their site and you have to complete the application by January 24th to be considered for the scholarships that are offered through CIEE. And by completing the application uh, link through our website, you get put on our roster of students who will be considered for some of our flight scholarships that will go to support some of those students selected to go. Lastly, uh, January 31st is a deadline for any other student. These are meant for current college students who are participating in a study abroad program, either through their institution or another third party. We wanna make sure there are some funds available for current college students studying abroad. So each quarter at the end of the month, there is a uh, scholarship deadline for students who want to be considered for funding to help support flight costs uh, in pursuit of those opportunities. So January 31st is the deadline for that. And I also have that application linked uh, into this email as well. With all these uh, study abroad programs, obviously there's some nuances with each. If you have any questions, please reach out and let me know as soon as possible. 
Finally, uh, I'm excited to announce that we also created a brand new scholarship fund that's designed to support the transfer students going from two year to four year institutions to help hopefully increase uh, your ability to complete that objective for our TRIO SSS programs at community colleges. So we are looking at an April 12th due date. Uh, the questions on this application look very similar to the last mile. Uh, so April 12th is the due date. So any community college students who are looking to transfer going into next uh, fall, fall 24, they want to be considered for these scholarships. Uh, they're $2,500 award amounts. And uh, we just ask all of you to kind of help us in this process of promoting this opportunity to each student. Uh, there is going to be a limit of five students that you can recommend for each SSS grant at a community college. So you can submit up to five recommendation letters. Uh, there's basically one of those checklists. You don't have to write a full letter. This is also a newer scholarship program. So if anybody has any questions uh, on the process or uh, how we're going to get funds into students, uh, please reach out and let me know. But excited to announce that we do have this new scholarship program open as well to support those transfer students. Next, I want to highlight uh, the fact book. So with APR collection taking place right now, we like to collect all of that information and data that you're submitting in your APR as well as some demographic info so that we can report kind of holistically on the entire state of Oregon and present uh, an actual fact book to stakeholders. So I've split the fact book collection process into two separate items. Previously it was all one. We would collect the data and that student story in a photo. I have kind of separated them in the hopes that we can get your APR data sooner and then you can work on the student story aspect. So I will have links in this email. The one is a form for you to submit your demographics and your APR data so we can just kind of get the, the data elements for our fact book. And then on the second link is an opportunity for you to just submit a short written uh, student trio story as well as a photograph that we can include in the document that we provide to our elected officials and different stakeholders highlighting student success stories. So if you have any questions about those aspects, definitely let me know. I am asking that uh, the due date for this be February 16th. That still gives us enough time to put together the final touches in our actual fact book and get them printed before we go to Washington DC and provide these to our uh, elected officials and their staff members. So February 16th is the due date to get in your fact book submission forms to me. Now that we are in 2024, uh, the Oregon Trail Association has a fiscal year that is a calendar year. So it is now time for membership renewal. And as we've discussed a fair amount over the past several months, uh, we are changing what the cost is for membership. It is no longer a flat rate, but it's tied to your GAN. It is that 0.15% of the GAN number. So the way I'm going to be doing membership is a two-step process. So what I'm asking all of you is to click on the link in the email. Once again, a lot of links uh, and submit a very simple form that just reports your current GAN for this academic year. And then I will invoice that individual directly with the membership invoice for 2024. It is uh, important that you complete those membership. A lot of the benefits, uh, your students being eligible for our scholarship programs, uh, the unallowable cost funds, Canva, like all the, all the benefits that come with this, uh, it's really essential that we get those membership uh, paid and then you can be an active participant in all things that OTA has to offer. So uh, if you could complete those processes early uh, in January, that would be much appreciated uh, and definitely reach out and let me know if you have any questions or if there is any financial challenges that you are facing uh, in the current fiscal year. Next, I want to announce that we're going to be creating a incentive program to try to get some video submissions uh, for are both trio professionals and our students. We are always looking to kind of increase the amount of student stories that we have, especially direct uh, video content from students so that we can put those on our social media and get some more awareness about what it is we're doing. If you are on social media at all, you are very aware that most of it is now reels, it's video format. And I don't wanna be on there every single day. Jordan, who manages our uh, OTA account, doesn't wanna be on there constantly. So we're looking for you all to highlight your students. So. Uh, I don't have the full details available right at this time or the form that you're going to submit yet, but we are going to be having 
a opportunity for you to just record short videos talking uh, about why TRIO works for that student or that student's TRIO story. Uh, we're gonna provide some prompts and we're asking that either the students or you all just record these videos and on our form is gonna be a way to upload those videos. And the incentive is that both the TRIO advisor for the student and the student are gonna be included in a raffle uh, for $100 Amazon gift cards. So we're looking to do this just for the month of January uh, and there'll be more information, like I said, to follow but uh, this way we get a lot more of the content we need to kind of fill our social media channels with our amazing students. And both you all have some incentives uh, to encourage your students to either record videos themselves or you to record uh, videos, uh, just short little snippets, like I mentioned. So more information to come, but I'm hoping that the dual incentive will encourage you all to promote this and help uh, us spread the word of the amazing work that TRIO is doing in our state. All right, speaking of incentives, um, I had a little time to chat with some folks uh, at the end of December on some of the quieter times. And I know that filling your student rosters has still been a challenge for certain communities, uh, especially those in the town search, but really across the spectrum, it can be difficult to kind of serve the number of students that you're funded to serve. So OTA wanted to kind of flex some of the cash that we have on hand and help uh, incentivize you all in that process. So what we have done is created an incentive program where students who are currently TRIO students, for every single student that they help recruit into TRIO and get a successful application submitted, they are basically gonna get one raffle ticket submitted into this giant bowl. Um, and once we hit the end of the due date, I'm gonna pull one of those names out of that bucket, one of our current TRIO students who helped us promote these opportunities and get their friends and our family members enrolled in TRIO programs. And that student is going to get $1,000 just cold cash. I'm gonna send them a check for $1,000. So I'm hoping that all of you can take this opportunity and promote it and help uh, increase the likelihood that your students can help promote TRIO opportunities and benefit from that financially. The due date is March 31st, between beginning of January through March 31st. Every single complete application uh, that a student can get submitted. Uh, I have this Google form. I'm, we're basically gonna be asking all you as the TRIO professionals to complete this for every student that successfully helps recruit in and refer uh, a student application. And all of these submissions to that will be included in the raffle for the $1,000 award. I encourage you all to kind of create your own uh, flyers and, and incentives. I kind of want to be that personal touch so you all can kind of craft how you want to sell this, uh, how you want to incentivize your students. But just know that we all are basically putting up the money to kind of follow through and make sure that students are rewarded for promoting TRIO programs to their friends. So. If you have any questions on this, please reach out and let me know. But once again, the link to that Google form where you submit the student's name uh, who got the referral and is going to be considered for that $1,000 award is attached in email with this video. All right, I, if you've gotten this far in the video, that means you obviously watch these, but I wanted to make sure that people have opportunities to kind of ask questions or get some more details. I try to be concise. I know this is a longer video, but uh, I want to give folks an opportunity to really understand all the things that are happening, especially now that we're in the new year. So I'm going to be hosting a webinar this Friday, January 5th from 3 to 4 p.m. where I am just kind of going over all things OTA and all the stuff that I just talked about here and give folks chances to ask questions, get more clarity on all the opportunities. So if you have any interest uh, in asking some questions, uh, please attend that. You can also email me ahead of time with some of those questions. I'll record the call and send that out as well so folks can just be in the know about all things OTA and all these opportunities that are upcoming now that we're in the new year and there's just a lot of kind of action items rolling in. Right, the last thing I just want to do here quickly is promote two really cool opportunities uh, that are available and registration is currently open for. The first is the Portland Workforce Alliance Career Fair. It's this amazing, massive, big summit. Uh, it's a career expo done at the convention center in Portland. 
This is taking place on March 19th, so it's a great opportunity for a field trip if you are close enough to Portland to bring students to get them exposure to a lot of different kind of careers uh, and talk with tables. And if you've ever been at Career Expo, they just do the, this is the best version of it that I have found in Oregon. Uh, and you all can register your programs and students and do a field trip to attend this. That is highly recommended. I also wanted to highlight the Young Leaders Program. They do some really cool civic leadership stuff. Uh, and there are some summer programs available. So whether you do it with your cohorts or you just want to present it to your students, give students a chance to uh, live in the dorms at Willamette and do like a really immersive week-long legislative experience about what it means to kind of be a civic leader. Um, so we're, we're obviously planning our own kind of civic leadership event uh, that will uh, look similar to this in certain ways, but I want to make sure that this opportunity is uh, has some awareness statewide in case you have any students or you have any interest in bringing students to this opportunity. All right, last, last thing. I know FAFSA is technically kind of live because they had to release it by the 31st to use that like prior, prior language on the financials. This is what is considered a soft launch. This is information we I received from COE, the last update they did with us, uh, some of the state leaders. You can run students through the entire FAFSA. They're not gonna have to redo it again later, but it is not quite a fully finished product, uh, but the FAFSA is open. You can start going through the process. I checked with some of my contacts at OSAC as well. There's not some entirely massive separate state form you need to do as well, right? There is um, our Oregon Opportunity Grant applications will be pulled straight from the FAFSA. You don't have to do two separate things. I know because it's not a finalized product, not every single state had necessarily synergized quite as well with the, the new application, but I checked with my OSAC folks and there's nothing further you need to do. I'm also gonna link here some of the resources that is provided by OSAC regarding all things FAFSA. There's also a lot of resources we provide on the OTA website, but I just want to be on top of this because I know we are all very confused and uh, not entirely sure what uh, things are looking like with FAFSA and just the transition this year to this better FAFSA. So uh, we shall see, but technically it is open, uh, open on the 31st. So with that, I don't have any further updates. I appreciate you so much for Seeing through all this information, uh, we try not to make it too overwhelming, and I, I greatly appreciate any and all efforts you can put in to kind of complete some of those action items around the fact book and membership uh, as early as possible. So I hope you all have a wonderful new year. As always, reach out with any questions uh, or thoughts or ideas you have for OTA, and we're super thrilled to be serving you here in the new year.